So hello, everyone, and welcome to our Keep Teaching workshop, facilitating online discussions with your students. Discussion boards are useful tools for facilitating student interaction and fostering a sense of community. In this workshop, we'll provide an overview of creating a discussion forum in Blackboard, both in original course view and ultra course view, and we'll cover how you can review and assess student discussion participation. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers, and I'm the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center here at NIU. Claire Duval is an instructional designer in our center, and she's ready to help answer specific questions that you may have in the chat section or via private chat. We'll both be taking questions at the end of the short presentation as well, so if you have specific questions not related to what we're covering at the moment during this presentation, please do save them for our Q&A session if you think there'll be questions that other faculty who may be watching this recording could benefit from. Otherwise, please feel free to post your individual questions in the chat thread for Claire. And again, if you could uh, mute your microphone, that would be great. So make sure that that microphone is muted on your screen in the lower middle part of your Collaborate screen so that we don't get feedback. Thank you. All right, so we're going to um, talk about both original course view and ultra course view today, and I'm going to give you some tutorials on how to set up discussion threads and how to grade them as well. Uh, we'll discover or uh, cover original course view first because many faculty are still using the original course view for their courses, um, but we'll also cover discussions in ultra course view, which we do encourage faculty who are not currently using Blackboard to adopt for ease of use. In original course view, there are a couple of ways that you could create your discussions. First, you would scroll down to see the lower part of the left-hand navigation menu until you see the course management section. Under course management, you'll select course tools. And then after you click on course tools, the menu will expand and you'll want to click on the discussion board tool there. Once you click on the discussion board tool, it will take you to the page you see in the top screenshot here. From here, you'll check on your courses or click on your courses discussion board. After you do so, you'll be directed to a list of your discussion boards. If you don't yet have any, you won't see anything listed there yet. But once you've created discussion forms and boards, you'll be able to see how many students have posted, how many posts you haven't yet read, um, any unread replies to you. And that information will appear to the right of each individual discussion board. To create a form from this view, click on the Create Form button just below the discussion board title towards the top of the page. So because some of the next steps overlap, I'm going to backtrack a little bit and show you a second way to get into this uh, Create a Discussion Forum place. You can also create a discussion forum from a content area in your course. For example, I created uh, a content area for students to post their reading responses for this um, this course. So click on the content area in the left-hand navigation menu where you want to post your discussion. <clears throat> when the content area opens up, you'll see options along the top of the page. You'll want to click on Tools and then select Discussion Board from the drop-down menu there. It should be right up there at the top of the Tools. When you create your discussion through a content area, what you're really doing is creating a link to the discussion board. If you had already created a discussion, you could just select it here and add a link to it in this content area by clicking Select a Discussion Board Forum, clicking on the Discussion Board Forum for which you want to add the link, and then clicking Next. However, you can also create a new forum from this page, and to do so, you would click Create New Forum. After you click on Create New Forum, you'll arrive at this page. This is the page that you'll start on when you click Create New Forum from within the Discussion Board list page that I originally showed you as that first option. When you create a forum, you want to add a unique name so that you and students can distinguish between your discussion forums. You also want to add a description. This can include requirements and instructions for student participation and evaluation. If you scroll down on the you'll see settings for the discussion forum. The first settings are for availability. You should make your form available to students. You can enter date and time restrictions if you want them to have limited access to the forum. So for example, you could restrict them from accessing it after a due date. 
Other settings include how students can participate. In the standard view, students can see the posts and replies of anyone who has participated so far, even if that student hasn't yet posted. You also have the option to restrict students from seeing others' threads before they've created a thread themselves. So that's a good option if you're worried about students simply restating each other's ideas or trying to see what others have posted before they participate. You can also set up grading for the discussion forum. You can assign points, set a due date, and associate a grading rubric or create one by clicking add rubric. If you plan to have the same requirements for participation for all of your discussions, you may want to consider creating a grading rubric and associating it with all of your discussion forums. That'll help expedite the grading process for you. Um, and I will be showing you an example uh, of just a basic discussion rubric that I use for my classes later on in the session. Some other settings available for discussions include whether you want to allow students to subscribe to the forum, whether you want students to be able to delete or edit their own posts. Uh, note that if you choose to force students to post to the forum before they can see others' posts, they won't be allowed to delete their first posts. You can also allow or restrict file attachments, post tagging, and post ratings. And finally, you could force moderation of posts. That means that you would have to manually approve each post before it would appear in the discussion board. There are pros and cons to forcing moderation. One benefit is that you can review the posts before the entire class can view them. But the drawback is that you have to take the time to review them manually, which may delay students' ability to reply to each other's posts and participate in the forum. Once you enter all of the necessary information and settings, then you want to click Submit to proceed. After you've submitted the discussion forum, you'll be redirected to the screen you were in before you created the new thread. It should automatically select the discussion board forum that you just created, and you'll just want to click Next to continue. If you created the forum from the discussion board list, you'll be returned to that tool page, and you should now see your discussion listed there. If you created the form from the content area or folder, you'll see this screen, which will create your link to the discussion form that you just created. You need to add a title, but you should also make sure that under options, the availability is set to yes so that students can access the link. This doesn't mean that they can access the form, though. You need to set up form availability when you create it. So if the link in the folder is available, but the forum is not, students won't be able to access the forum. But if the forum is available and the link here is not, students could still access the forum from the discussions tool link in the left-hand navigation menu or through another discussion link. So if you want to restrict students from accessing the forum, the best way to do that is to do that in the forum settings, not in these link settings, because this is just a link to that tool. Once you've entered the information that you want here, then you can submit, click, uh, click Submit to create the tool link. After you submit, you will see your discussion board link in the content area or folder. In this example, I added the discussion instructions in the link text that also appear in the forum description um, so that students can see that when they go into this content area before they start it. Um, if you want instructions to appear in both places, make sure that you do copy your instructions when creating the forum so you can post them to the text box for the discussion link. Or you could go back into uh, the discussion board list and copy them from there um, and add them to your link later. You could choose not to add discussion links anywhere and only direct students to click on the discussion board tool in the course's left-hand navigation menu. Um, if you don't automatically see a link to that tool and want to add it for students, just click the plus sign at the top of the menu and then click tool link. You should see discussion board as an option as you can see uh, on the right hand side here. You can name it Discussion Board or you can give it some other intuitive name. Make sure that you check the box to make the link available to users so that your students can access that. If you set up your form to be graded, you can access discussions that need to be graded from the Grade Center. If you click on Needs Grading, you'll begin to see a list of discussion posts that need grading as students begin to participate in those discussions. You can also view who has submitted from the full Grade Center. There will be an indication when an assignment needs grading there. If you click Needs Grading and a student has participated, you'll see the list of students who have discussions that need grading. Um, it'll also include if you've got any other assignments um, outside of discussions that are being graded as well. You'll just click on the student's name to begin grading that assignment. You can also view submissions that don't contribute to students' grades here. So even if um, you don't want to grade a discussion, but you want to easily access 
that discussion in, in an individual student um, format, then you just click show, uh, show attempts that don't contribute to user's grade at the top, and then click filter, and you'll be able to see those uh, discussions as well. When you click to grade a discussion, you'll see a page that looks like this. You'll see all of that student's posts and replies to that single discussion thread so that you can grade both their initial posts and peer responses at once. If you're creating a grading rubric, make sure that you provide criteria for both, um, if both of them are going to be factored into their grade, both the initial post and the responses to their peers. If you create a rubric, you would see an icon for it under the space to input a score on this grading page. You would just click on the rubric icon, the rubric would pop up. You would click on the boxes next to each of the criteria to indicate the student's level of performance for each, and then click Save and Submit. And then the grade area here would populate with the number of points that corresponds to um, their scores on the grading rubric. So this is a, an example of a discussion rubric that I'm currently using for one of my online courses. To simplify grading, I include just two criteria, initial post and peer responses. And I've described what each level of uh, achievement would look like for each criteria. There are five levels of achieve, achievement in addition to a null level for missing initial posts or peer responses. It takes a while to write descriptors for your rubric. So if you're crunched for time, you can just write brief descriptors or you can feel free to steal my rubric and adjust it to meet your needs. Um, I will send uh, an editable word file of this rubric to everyone who's attending today's workshop. Um, and it'll also be posted to our resources uh, on our Keep Teaching page too. <clears throat> I also mentioned earlier that you can see what needs to be graded in your full grade center. You can get a bigger picture of the entire class's submissions and grades from this page, and that can help you identify whether any of your students aren't submitting discussions or other assignments so that you can reach out to them and help them succeed in the class. Students may need more support when you're delivering your course remotely. It requires more self-regulation from learners, and they may not be used to checking Blackboard often for assignments and announcements if they haven't been required to do so for your class so far. Uh, if you notice a student in, isn't participating, you can contact them through the gradebook itself. To do that, you want to click on the arrow next to their first or last name in the full grade center. It appears when you hover over it and select the option email user from the drop down menu. So that's it for the original course view instructions. Um, there may be some of you who are using ultra course view. There's a difference between ultra base navigation, which we all use. That's when you first log into Blackboard, uh, what we see, and ultra course view, which is the design of an individual course. So that's what you see when you click on the course that you're teaching on Blackboard. So next we're going to cover how to create discussions in ultra view courses and how to use them there. As an original course view, there are two places that you can create a discussion in an ultra view course. One is in the course content area, which you can see in the middle of the page here. The other is through the discussion icon in the upper right hand corner of the, of the course page. Create a discussion in the course content area, hover over a line on the page. The line will turn purple and a plus sign will appear in the middle. You'll want to click on that plus sign to add content. When you click on the plus sign, a menu is going to pop up. You want to select Create from this menu and click on that. When you do, this will pop up minus the arrow there. When you click Create Item, a menu will appear on the right-hand side of the screen over the course. You'll need to scroll down to find participation and engagement options. Once you scroll down to View Participation and Engagement, you'll see the option for Discussion. Click on that option to create your discussion. Next, you'll see discussion settings. There's an option titled display on course content page that will be checked already if you're creating the discussion from the course content page. But if you're creating it through the discussion page of the course, you can check this and it will add it to the course content page. You might need to move it around if you've got folder, a folder that you want to put it in though. There are some similar options for settings in ultra course view discussions as in original view. For example, you can force students to post first before they can view other students' activity, and you can choose to grade the discussion. Check the box next to the options that you want for your discussion, and you can also set a due date by which students must participate and choose how they will be graded from this page as well. If you scroll down further in the menu, you can see additional tools, and here you can attach a grading rubric. Click Save when you're finished determining your discussion settings. 
You'll be taken to the discussions page where you can change the name of the discussion and enter instructions. Once you've changed the discussion name and entered a description or instructions in the text box, then click Save. Another setting you'll want to double check is the availability in the upper right hand corner there. Make sure that if you want students to access the discussion, you set the availability to visible to students instead of hidden from students. Um, there's also conditional availability, which means that students, um, it's, it's like availability settings um, in original course view where you can set up uh, certain dates that the um, discussion will be available to students as well. There are implications with that for the gradebook, so if that's something that um, you want to look at, then make sure that you contact one of us and we can walk you through uh, what implications that has. You can also participate in the discussion by typing into the discussion box. I mentioned that there were two ways to create a discussion, so you can also create the discussion from the discussion section of the course by clicking on the speech bubble icon in the upper right hand corner of your UltraView course. That's where you'll see all of your discussions listed. You can add a discussion in the same way as you would in the content area here. If you hover over one of the lines in the discussion list, you'll see the same purple plus sign. And if you click on it, one of the options will be add discussion. The rest of the steps are the same as I previously addressed in the content area instructions. To grade the discussion, you'll go to the gradebook. You'll access the gradebook through the icon in the upper right hand corner of the course screen. It looks like a pad of paper with a pen or pencil over it. The alt text pop up should say gradebook. The default view of the gradebook is a list of assessments. Under each assessment, you'll see how many students have participated and how many submissions need to be graded. If you click on the title of the discussion board, you'll be able to grade those student submissions. You'll see a list of students in the course and how many discussion posts that they've made on that discussion board. However, you cannot see their discussion posts until you click on the individual student's name. After you click on a student's name, you'll see their participation in the discussion, including their posts and responses to their peers' posts. If you have an associated rubric within the discussion, there will be a grid icon within the blank grade oval, uh, the grade submission icon in the upper right-hand corner of the activity page. To access the rubric or enter a grade without a rubric, you want to click on that oval. To add feedback comments, you'll click on the square speech bubble with the plus sign in it, just to the right of the grade submission icon. Something that is available in Ultra Course View is the discussion analysis as well. It's an in interesting analytic information, but you don't really need to worry about it at this point when you're just trying to get your course delivered remotely. When you click on the feedback icon, the feedback text box will pop open. You can type your comments here or you can attach a document if you're, you prefer to record your comments outside of Blackboard first, for example, in a Word document. When you're finished providing feedback, then make sure that you click Save. After you've saved your feedback, the feedback icon will change slightly. There will be lines inside of the speech bubble instead of a plus sign to indicate that there is feedback there. Once you've entered a score in the Grade Center or grade using the rubric, the score will turn green and you will see the student's grade. Unlike with Original Course View, where grades are automatically posted as you grade each individual assignment, in Ultra Course View, you must post your grades. You can post each grade as you grade, or you can wait until you've graded all students' work for a discussion or another assessment, and then post them all at once. Until you post the grades, student can, students cannot see their grades or feedback, so don't forget that step. And once you click post, it will show you that the grade um, that uh, the grade item has been posted. Once it says posted next to the grade, your student can see their grade and access your feedback or comments. Within the gradebook, you can also switch how you view the gradebook. The default is a list of assessments, but if you click the grid icon in the upper left corner of the gradebook page, you can see what looks approximately like the full grade center in original view courses. And that will look like this, only it will have more students in there except and um, just my preview one here. In the grid view, you'll see of the students listed in the leftmost column, just like in the original course views full grade center. You'll also see the assessments factored into students' grades along the upper of the gradebook grid. And if you're finished grading all student submissions for a discussion, for example, there will be a black bar that says complete. 
underneath <clears throat> that appears underneath the points value for the discussion. You can click any grade now links to grade an individual student's assessment for a discussion assignment or any other assessment from here. So I just want to end the talking part of the workshop with some tips for using discussion boards to help deliver your course remotely now that I've gone through the nuts and bolts of how to do it in original and ultra course view. Um, first, it may be useful to create an ungraded help or questions discussion board and encourage students to post general questions there and send a instead of sending them via email to you. I would also recommend encouraging them to check the form if they have a question before asking you so that they can see if anyone has posted the same question already. If you create a help or a questions form, enable the subscriptions and then subscribe to the form so you're notified by email when new questions are posted. That'll help you keep track of students' questions and make sure that they're answered in a timely fashion. You could also encourage students to answer each other's questions in this forum. Um, for example, I give the first student who provides the correct answer an extra credit point, and they always ask about extra credit, so um, it doesn't really affect their grade that much, but you give them that point. Um, a help or questions forum is beneficial because it can help avoid multiple students emailing you with the same question, and everyone can see the questions and answers within the discussion board, and that they have access to that throughout the entire um, semester. You could also choose to create a social discussion forum for off-topic discussions that could help foster class community and camaraderie while your courses are being delivered remotely. Another tip that I can share is to specify due dates for required contributions, including initial posts and responses to peers. You can assign a due date as you set up each discussion, but I would also recommend to include due dates for discussion contributions in the forum description or somewhere else in your course that's intuitive and easily accessible, such as the announcements page, um, if that's land the landing page of your course. In addition, Consider providing consistent due dates for initial posts and peer responses. So for example, initial posts are due on Fridays and peer responses are due on Sundays. That creates predictability for students so that they can plan their schedules accordingly and eliminate some of the stress of moving to remote learning. That'll also help you schedule your own grading time and enable you to keep up with engaging students within the discussion boards by replying to some of your students' posts. Another tip is considering the availability of your discussion forms. You can make discussion forms available as needed. So for example, if you want to release them weekly rather than all at once to avoid confusion or overwhelming students. However, you might want to consider what will happen if you yourself fall ill. Will you be able to keep up with adding content to your course? You have a couple of options to plan your, your course in case you become ill. One would be to make all of the discussions available to students at once to give them and you some flexibility. Another would be to set up your discussion forums to open and close on specific days and times according to your course schedule. With either option, you'll need to set up your discussions sooner rather than later, which means front-loading a lot of that work. And finally, provide students with your expectations for their participation in your discussion forums. How many posts are required? What are the content and length requirements? How will you be grading the discussion participation? Will you use a grading rubric? Make sure to share your expectations with students so that they know how to participate and so that you give them every chance to be successful in your course as you move to remote learning. Finally, I just want to point out that our Keep Teaching website um, is up and running. We've created guides for you to get started, provided some quick strategies for shifting to remote teaching and learning, included some scenarios for different types of courses to help you think about how you could deliver them remotely. We've linked to resources to help you with technology, including Blackboard, video authoring, and web conferencing, provided links to register for our workshops, and answered some frequently asked questions you may have. And there's also a help section where you can contact us here at faculty development. On the home page, you can scroll down to sign up for a workshop or individual support consultation. And on the workshops page, you can search for workshops by day or type, and you can access workshop recordings as they become available. All the workshops in the schedule this week will be recorded and shared on this page. To schedule a consultation, you should fill out the online form and choose the service that you want and the date and time you'd like to reserve. Add your contact information in the space provided and give us a brief description of your question or issue so that we have an idea of what you want us to help you with. One-on-one -on -one consultations will be delivered remotely, either by phone or online via Blackboard Collaborate. If Collaborate is having issues, online consultations could also be conducted using Microsoft Teams. Um, these resources will also be available uh, on our Keep Teaching website too, but I just 
wanted to share a few resource, resources for online discussion pedagogy. I've gone through, um, you know, more of the technical side of it today, but if you want some pedagogical resources, I've compiled just a short list here. Uh, First resource from Brown University addresses some key questions for designing online discussions. The second is a guide from Purdue University on facilitating online discussions. The next research, uh, resource from Educause offers 10 tips for effective online discussions. And then the final one is from our Fact Dev blog, um, Jason Rohde, and it is an infographic on how to write engaging questions for online discussion forums. And all of these resource source links I mentioned are going to be available in the resources section of our Keep Teaching website, so please visit that website for helpful resources on this and many more topics related to moving face-to-face -face courses to remote delivery.